Hello again, I'm back on the case. Yeah, a little bit of a happier day today. I'm having another look at the uh, amplifier. I've had quite a lot of excellent advice uh, pass forward, so thanks chaps for the fantastic suggestions. And I'm gonna have a quick, uh, another look around today. So today I'm gonna um, try and remove the valves and see what goes on, see if we've got a faulty valve. So we've got the uh, amplifier opened up this time, fully opened up, taken all the casings off. And we can have a, a good look around before we start. And uh, the fault that I had, obviously, was the high uh, grid current, which uh, was popping the fuse down there. When I switched it on, uh, with no drive power, so something's gone short circuit. I uh, didn't even get to transmit, so there's a problem. So, being suggested to check the uh, valves next, so we're going to take the valves out, the two ceramic GI7B valves, and then we're going to uh, see whether or not we get the same kind of... Uh, anode reading uh, without the valves in uh, obviously if we don't that's the problem if we do then we've got to look for a next solution so right now i'm just about to desolder these heaters which are connected to these coolers they're on the top of the uh, gi7b ceramic valve so a quick uh, desoldering task on that which will give me the opportunity to then remove this bolt from the side and then these valves should just unplug so there's two of them, so I'm going to be taking them out. And then once we've done that, we're going to have a quick go at firing up the power again and seeing whether we can see any other faults. So that's the mission at the moment. A little bit more enthusiasm this time round. And hopefully uh, once I get this sorted, we'll be able to push on and, and get somewhere. So just give me a quick look at it from this particular angle. And also from this angle, once we've got the casings off. So you can see the build quality is pretty good and uh, it's a decent amplifier so I'm going to keep trying and if I can't manage to fathom it out I'm sure you guys will have a few more ideas to pass forward which we can try and obviously go through it one step at a time that's the only way to do it. So on with the uh, desoldering now and removal of these two GI7B ceramic valves. Okay, so I've got a little bit further. I've managed to desolder the uh, heater uh, off each um, cooler and I've removed the coolers now. So I've got the coolers off the top of the valves. We've also taken the side wall off. And uh, what we're up against now is if you look at the bottom of that, we've got a bit of a desoldering task. So where the bar connects to the bottom of the valve, it's uh, basically soldered on, if you can see that. So I'm going to have to carefully desolder that now. Uh, once I've desoldered that, I technically should be able to slide the valve out of the of the valve uh, base, the unit that holds it, and then um, work on the other side, do exactly the same to the other one. So a little bit tricky, but we're getting there. So I managed to get the first one out. That wasn't too difficult. Uh, just undid the clamps, slackened all the uh, clamp bolts off. And uh, managed to take the sides off and then desoldered the base of this older valve which was in there. So that's the one that's come out. So I've just got to do the second one now. And then uh, I'll be ready to look into the next stage of this uh, fault finding exercise. Okay, initial checks are now in place. So we've removed both of the GI7B ceramic valves. I've just made sure that uh, the actual uh, way they're connected up can't short circuit inside the amp so it's separated and now we're running the amplifier on standby without any amp any valves in there so I'm just going to attempt to uh, see what's happening and before we're getting a full scale reading on the ammeter picking up a current from the grid so that will also uh, that's what caused a problem so being suggested that uh, if a valve has gone down that would cause that issue so now we've got the valves out we can see whether or not we're getting a reading so a quick check, and as you can see, we're not getting air reading whatsoever. So the relay is clicking in, everything seems to be as it should be, and uh, the actual amp meter is not moving. So that's looking really positive at this stage. So I'm not going to leave it on for long because I don't want to create too much hazards. But as you can see, that's a situation without the valves in it there. Yeah, th things are definitely uh, looking a bit more positive than what they were. So we've removed the valves and we're about to refit the new valves now that we know that we're not getting that 
high reading which we were getting with the valves in so i've been told by a good source that it could with a valve which has obviously gone down causing a short circuit on both valves so we're going to put the other valves in now fingers crossed that will resolve the problem but we may find another problem yet so not getting too excited yet because i wonder why the actual valves went down in the first place or possibly uh, could be just wear and tear we'll see uh, when we get to the next stage which is putting the valves back in resoldering the connections on the bottom putting the sides back on putting the uh before we do that we best put the um heat dissipation heat sinks on the top and then we'll have to reconnect the heaters by resoldering them up so not too difficult so oh, so far it's all going really well I'm, i must say i'm actually really enjoying it so thanks once again for all the expert assistance that's been coming through really appreciate it i wouldn't have uh Fancy trying it uh, until you guys, uh, Ian in particular, explained a little one or two ways of going about it. So thanks, Ian. And uh, I'll give you a shout out at the end. We'll see how it goes anyway. Like I say, uh, it, it's not over yet. We haven't got it working yet. But certainly it's enjoyable enough uh, learning a little bit more about how this goes together and uh, things you can try out. Try to repair your own HF amplifier, hopefully nice and safely. And then zero YKS. So I'm back to the building up part, so what came out, just a quick reminder, we've got this uh, this ceramic GI7B valve and that there actually, we're fixing that, that in that way, so the plug in, slide through that clamp there, there's a second clamp which clamps around that one connecting that that, that point of connection on the valve and then you've got the, the bottom fixing the third connection which is a soldered connection in this situation, I've seen some of the uh, ones on the internet which have got a proper pushing base plate so a, a little bit of a more better design possibly than this this is just a straightforward soldered link on the bottom which links to that, that unit on this there I think that's some kind of next fire system I'm not too sure but anyway we've got the valve out that's the main thing so what I've got to do now I've got to think about this so this is the uh, the, the, the actual uh, what I think it's called the anode heat displacement unit but basically it's just a big heat sink that's going to drop on the top of the valve, keep the top of the valve unit cool. So it comes with a little threaded bolt which is, which is, and a washer. So I've got all the new ones in the box. And I've got a brand new valve right here uh, ready to go in. So that's a replacement which I'm going to fit in a moment. So fingers crossed this will be the, uh, the problem rectified. So I've just got to sort, sort out how I can slide that in there. Get the soldering iron in from the back and re-solder on that connecting bar across the bottom onto the new one so i'm just going to do that now so fingers crossed it's going to work out so i've got this new valve that's going to try and slide this through and get into a position so i'm going to put some solder on the base of it at the bottom there so that's going to slip into there I'm not going to fully connect that up so it'll give me a little bit more room. Slide that one on. And that bar's lined up perfectly really, so that's not too bad. Be careful you've got to use those little side links when you take them off. Well, that one anyway. So I managed to fix these the valve in position. It's a uh, lined up perfectly into the new clamp, well the clamp should I say, the top clamp and I've got it into the next clamp which goes on the second connection and then I've managed to uh, re-solder the bar onto the bottom of this uh, new uh, GI7B ceramic valve so that's quite a decent enough little start, it's going okay, soldered up pretty easy, it took a little bit of time to warm up the uh, end of the the, uh, the valve with it being a fairly large surface area and I'm not using a, a massive iron got to be careful that I didn't touch anything else and uh, so far so good so just got to um, basically do all that again now second time around tighten up all the clamps and uh, we'll be fitting the heat sink on the top of this one and then we'll be connecting up the, the heating element so going okay so far so there you have it that's the first one back in and as you can see above the fan there's a, a ring where this wire rail connects that's what I've just soldered on to the bottom of the ceramic valve which is now sitting in fully clamped and tightened with the heat sink back in place which has been nipped on also I've reconnected the heater sold that back to the lug so going well so we've just got to continue now and 
completely uh, repeat the same process for this side so we're going to get a, another new valve out and we're going to do it all again and then hopefully we'll be uh, up and running and back on with the QRO so the replacements have been fitted so we've got both valves replaced I've got the heaters connected back up to the coolers and as you can see the new valve is in that side sitting in properly all fully soldered back in line and the other one is in that side so all that's remained to see now is to, to see what happens on this this uh, fuse here uh, see whether or not it withholds it once we switch it on and let it warm up and obviously this resistor which is known as a glitch resistor I've, I've since found out so it's a glitch or grid board fuse and the glitch resistor so keep an eye on those two obviously keep an eye on everything that we've replaced and it's going to be a case of just letting it warm up nice and slow and we'll see whether the uh, the meter slams across to the right and then once we've got this uh, if it does work we can look at possibly changing the meter uh, on, a, on a future one but for now we'll concentrate on this problem and we'll get to the bottom of this fingers crossed well, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to work but it's always uh, worth a try and been good fun doing it must admit really enjoyed myself okay the valves are in just in case I've seen what happens when I switch this circuit in so far so good So everything's switched on now, the valves are in. I put a new resistor in line, changed it just in case it was damaged. The uh, thick blow resistor and also obviously a new fuse. New valves, new resistor, new fuse. No pops and bangs just yet. Must admit it's quite nerve wracking, a little bit nervous here, stood here. So I'm going to have to leave this on now on standby for a couple of hours and see whether or not we've got any output when I press that PTT switch. I didn't do it just yet. I'm going to make sure everything warms up thoroughly after taking everything out. So we'll come back shortly and see what happens. So far so good. Hello. Up and running for just over one minute and we've not set anybody on fire as yet. So hopefully the result's going to be positive. So yeah, things are looking okay so far. We're on standby, warmed up. Uh, I've just tried uh, the PTT switch and uh, the, the scale did not happen. So we didn't get no full scale like last time. So MM0 India Mike Charlie, thanks for the help Ian. Uh, you've been uh, a lifesaver. I think maybe you might have been right. So I'm just gonna wait long, a little bit longer, uh, let the new valves get fully warmed and settled in. And I'll try to put a bit of RF through. So I'm not, uh, dancing yet but so far so good on the uh, valve amp repair so thanks again to ian for the help and everybody else uh, via facebook and youtube that's been uh, chipping in with a few very useful suggestions so i really enjoyed myself it's been a learning experience and a fantastic amateur radio community getting in there and thanks to m3 tango lima lima louise my Yankee Lima for uh, posting a post and getting everybody chatting about it. So catch you later, hopefully with a bit of power, but I'll let you know. I'll put a post on the community page if it works. I'm just going to let it warm up for a few hours. 73.